Right, let's, let's go ahead and start. If it's uh, one o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday, it must be methane, uh, the fast mitigation spirit, uh, sprint. So I wanna say greetings. I'm David Malpass, president of the World Bank. Uh, we're, we're at the World Bank Group's Climate Action Pavilion here at COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, I'm, I'm joined uh, by Werner uh, Hoyer, the president of the European Investment Bank. Uh, Odile Besso will be here from the uh, EBRD. Uh, uh, John Podesta, senior advisor to the, to the US President, President Biden for clean energy innovation and implementation. And uh, Xia Jinhua, the special envoy for climate change from China. Um, also, Daniela Marquez, CEO of Keisha, Will, will, may join. Um, and w this is an important meeting uh, because we are talking about one of the most potent, potent greenhouse gas uh, emissions, methane. Uh, we are uh, it, we are launching an initiative uh, called the Fast Mitigation Sprint. Uh, the the goal is to identify big uh, sources that are correctable uh, and move as quickly as possible on them. So let me share a few thoughts, and then we're going to have uh, questions and discussion with the panel. Uh, as you know, methane is a serious challenge. Uh, its uh, emissions are growing at the fastest rate ever. Two-thirds of this comes from human activity. There are cost-effective interventions to reduce methane emissions. Uh, they're available, and they need to be prioritized. The vast majority of methane emissions from human activity comes from agriculture and food, energy and, san and sanitation and waste. The World Bank has been involved in each of these uh, sectors uh, with specific uh, methane reduction projects. We are deepening our, our uh, uh, involvement and helping to detect and monitor leaks, financing projects, and supporting reforms and capacity building. For example, in Indonesia, we're pr we provided $250 million in financing to rehabilitate and modernize irrigation infrastructures and improve soil carbon pool. Um, our our uh, global gas flaring reduction partnerships uh, initiative commits governments and companies not to flare or vent associated gas. We also provide financing to operationalize interventions in this space. For example, IFC arranged a $360 million financing to reduce gas flaring in Iraq. That's a project that's ongoing. It's one of the largest such projects in the world. Fast mitigation requires diagnostics. We've included extensive work with our country climate development reports on methane reduction in various countries. It can virtually eliminate methane emission, uh, emissions from, uh, from fields, for example, through different, for, through agricultural project, uh, uh, practices. It's critical that actions like these take place uh, in conjunction with strong partnerships. So I'm very pleased to be joined today by two of my MDB partners, the EIB and EBRD, and then by two uh, major World Bank shareholders, but also major uh, countries engaged in methane emission reduction, the US and China. So with that, I'd like to turn to uh, uh, Werner Hoyer, uh, president of the European Investment Bank, and ask for your thoughts on on the financing challenges that we face with methane and your engagement. Well, thank you very much, David, for hosting this event and for the hospitality extended to us. Uh, I'm very grateful that the United States and the European Union uh, triggered the debate about methane, and which then led to the, um, the decision in Glasgow about the methane pledge. I think methane is often underestimated as far as it's uh, problematic for our environment is. And therefore it's good that we, are, that we have pl pledged to the pledge, but now we need to deliver on the pledges. And uh, so uh, I always say, uh, Belfast, uh, Glasgow was a uh, cup of announcements and commitments. Uh, Sharm el-Sheikh must be the cup of delivery. So, um, 
the Global Methane Pledge, and we as the European Investment Bank are a formal supporter of it, we presented a very clear commitment. Methane uh, emissions account for 20% of greenhouse gases emis emissions and are on the rise. Agriculture, as you just said, I only repeat this one figure, agriculture and waste sectors together are responsible for 60% of human-made methane emissions. We are sometimes too much focused on the necessary reduction of methane leaks and flaring uh, in the connection with, with, with gas and other sources, but we sometimes underestimate the importance of methane in the agricultural and, and waste fields. Uh, in addition, by collecting methane and transforming it into biogas that can be used on site as an energy source, so we should use the opportunity to transform a problem into a resource, that's energy. Uh, for this reason, biogas production has been included as an objective in the European Commission's Group Power EU initiative, to which, of course, we have uh, pledged our support as well. Group Power EU aims at decreasing the reliance on, of Europe from Russian gas, an initiative that will support with, we will support with uh, 30 billion euro of financing to 2027 for renewable energy, energy efficiency, innovation, and sustainable biogas production. But let's be concrete. Let me give you a few examples of investment we support in Europe and beyond that result in the reduction of methane emissions and support farmers and the economy. Firstly, in the bioeconomy sector, we support farmers to identify solutions to collect and use agricultural crop and livestock residue to produce sustainable biomethane. Also very important, we focus on projects that reduce and possibly avoid food losses and wastage along the production and supply chains. The Arch Cold Chain Solution Fund targets investments in food storage in Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, and other places. It's a good example. It avoids food losses and reduces methane. Another win-win. Secondly, in the wastewater and solid waste management sector, we support best practices and integrated systems that reduce methane emissions and produce green energy from sludge and solid waste. So, potential investments in this area are rather limited. The key challenge is that sources are fragmented and dispersed, so we need to further grow and develop a pipeline of good financial projects. To do this, dedicated assistance and capacity building will be key. It's also key to support developing countries in better measuring and reporting source of emissions and integrating this into their long-term plans. Initiatives like the Global Methane Pledge allow us to improve the reporting and measurement. What gets measured gets managed. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Werner, and welcome, Odile. We'll come, we'll come back to you, uh, and I'm going to go straight to John Podesta. I'm glad you could join. And the U.S. has been a, a long-standing partner to the World Bank on on global climate initiatives. The fast initiative, the the fast mitigation sprint. So we're here today for a fast mitigation sprint uh, for methane reduction. It's cr a critical engagement. So, could you tell us more about the U.S. thinking on this important work? Thanks, John. Thank you, President Malpas. And if, I think my mic's on. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, uh, Odile, we'll give you a chance to catch your breath. Uh, I want to just say three things. Why is this important? What's the U.S. doing about it domestically? And what is this initiative, uh, Mr. President, pushing forward with the International Financial Institute so critical? Why is this important? Of the 1.1, 1.2 degrees C uh, global warming we've seen to date, 0.5 degrees are accounted for from methane, not CO2, which is, which I think we have to keep in mind against another statistic, which is only 0.2%, I'm sorry, 2% of investment in mitigation is going to methane reduction. So it's a giant share of the problem, but relatively limited 
uh, amount of climate finance is going to this problem. And that's why it's important to change the dynamic. In the United States, I think we've recognized that through a series of uh, initiatives that President Biden and Vice President Harris have undertaken, uh, starting with the bipartisan infrastructure law and then uh, with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, it's aimed at a, n a number of things uh, to reduce emissions from abandoned uh, coal mines, from abandoned oil and gas wells, uh, to uh, push forward with regulations that the EPA will be coming forward with uh, in the near, very, very near future, uh, to regulate uh, the emissions from the oil and gas sector more significantly, uh, to deal with uh, emissions coming off of public lands, which is the province of the Department of Interior. So from a regulatory perspective, we're trying to push emissions down. Uh, these are cost effective. Uh, there's a, a term that people use called uh, the negative cost. Does anybody know what a negative cost is? I don't see many hands raised. That means you make money from controlling these emissions. So it's the smart thing to do, it's the economic thing to do, it's the right thing to do, and we need to do it uh, from a global uh, warming perspective. We're also tackling emissions from the agriculture sector that the President Malpas uh, described recently, $500 million uh, coming from our CCC, our Commodity Credit Corporation, that uh, to reduce emissions in both meat production and agriculture more generally. I think this will have a major impact globally because the uh, kinds of agricultural interventions that will be practiced in the United States have global application and global scale, including with our friends uh, in China. Minister Xi and I have talked about this many times. Um, so that's what the United States is doing. All the sources of government, all effort to reduce our emissions. But uh, again, this is a global problem, and it's why really the international financial institutions have to step up their game, and so glad that you're taking this initiative uh, today. Uh, the United States has encouraged that, and I think there are a number of things that need to happen. I think highlighting the abatement uh, opportunities uh, and associated co-benefits in country-specific plans is critical. Helping countries meet their, their uh, nationally determined commitments if they've adopted an, uh, an all greenhouse gas commitment is critical, and the, and the World Bank and the other institutions are going to be absolutely critical in helping countries get through that. Um, uh, we need to, by the way, track and report methane emissions impact on sponsored projects. I think that's very important. Uh, and then finally, and I'll close with this, which is uh, methane's shorter lived in the atmosphere than, green, than, uh, than uh, CO2. And so it's very critical that we adopt methodologies that uh, uses the uh, GWP 20 rather than G GWP 100 methodology to see because reducing methane now has immediate impacts we can get if we meet the global methane pledge we can reduce uh, average temperatures by 2050 by 0.2 degrees C and so adopting methodologies that's accounting for this very heavy short-term impact on the uh, on atmosphere and on global warming, I think is appropriate, and I hope that the that the institutions will take that that call up to uh, move forward with that sort of accounting system. Thank thank you very much, uh, John. I have two examples, and then I'll go to Minister Schwa and then to Odil. Um, what uh, we recently completed the CCDR for Vietnam, so it's a detailed, in-depth diagnostic. One of the findings of that was that uh, Vietnam could stop, almost fully stop, methane emissions from Vietnam by alternating wetting and drying methods in farming of rice fields. So that that will bring us to China.
wine as well, the alternating wetting and drying methods. And then the second, uh, I, to John, to your point about how do you, the sponsored projects, how do you keep from increasing methane through sponsored, I was just in, in South Africa this weekend. One of their challenges is they've put a tax on coal mining, uh, but that has caused uh, miners to mines to be abandoned, and that leaves the methane unabated. So you end up with a with an abandoned coal mine that is uh, that is em em emitting large amounts of methane. So taking that into account in the project preparation becomes very important. With that, let me turn to Minister Xia. Um, thank thank you for joining, and could you share thoughts on on China, maybe from the agriculture perspective? Uh, when I received an invitation, I don't appreciate it. When I received an invitation to this event, I asked my colleagues, uh, what are the people, what are the other panelists that have been invited to this event? They told me uh, World Bank, uh, EIB, EBRD, and the uh, US. Uh, so I was very happy to hear that because they are all the um, main funders. Uh,按照巴黎协定的要求，中国的NDC并不包括甲烷等温室气体的排放。我们2006年前的碳中和是包括了温室气体。In uh, terms of um, methane emission reduction for China, according to the requirements of the Paris Agreement, China's nationally determined contributions doesn't include emission targets for methane, but we have included this. Uh, other uh, other greenhouse gases, including methane, uh, in our carbon neutrality goal uh, before 2060.但是甲烷呢，它这个寿命短，浓度高，在温室气体的排放当中呢，占很大的比重，所以应该引起足够的重视。is short-lived and uh, has a high concentration in the atmosphere, Therefore, uh, and it is also taking a high percentage in the greenhouse gases. Therefore, uh, em uh, methane emission reduction must uh, be, uh, we must attach great importance to it. Glasgow中国参加了控制甲烷的这个倡议，我们这个今年已经完成了这个严格控制和减少甲烷排放的国家的计划。这个国家的战略计划已经编制完成了。Last year, China also signed up to the Glasgow Methane Pledge. And this year, China has already formulated a draft national strategy on strictly controlling the emission of methane. And in this uh, strategy, we mainly target methane control and uh, reduction in three major areas. First, the energy, uh, in, including oil and gas and others. Second, agriculture. And third, waste treatment. Uh现在我们已经分别在这三个领域制定了减少和控制甲烷排放的计划行动以及呢初步的确定了目标。为什么叫初步的确定了目标呢?因为中国这方面的基础工作比较弱,它这个底数还不太清楚。we have uh, formulated the plans, the actions to be taken, 
in the control and reduction of methane in these areas. And we also um, propose some preliminary goals in these areas. Why the goals are preliminary? Because China still have a rather weak uh, basic capabilities and uh, a rather weak basic uh, statistical foundation in this area. So the first so for the first step, we must establish a system for the monitoring, the statistics, and auditing of the control of methane emission. Second, um, prioritize conservation. We must uh, reduce the use of resources uh, at the source and to make it more efficient. Uh,刚才行长提到了中国在农业方面，你们做了些什么？实际上在农业方面呢，我们首先一个是把中国由于这个农业产生的秸秆要迁给它综合利用了。现在我们基本上综合利用的水平，秸秆的综合利用水平已
Um, thank you. And uh, so I'm, I'll turn to uh, Odile Renaud Besso, uh, President of the European uh, Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Um, and John Podesta gave us two, two thoughts. One is the urgency of action on methane because of the huge near-term impact that it's making. And then also the, the, the call, the challenge to MDBs to help with the various financing uh, efforts. Uh, and that goes to, and we heard China say the same thing. How do we find the financing mechanism? So your thoughts on that, Odile. Thank you. Speak loudly. Yep, that's it. Good, thank you very much. I'm sorry for ending. Few, so first of all, yes, it's very urgent. 16% uh, of greenhouse gas emissions are from methane, and this is very 95% of these methane emissions emission in uh, few sectors, agriculture, energy, water sanitation, waste sectors. So urgent, imp very important for the green agenda, and quite concentrated in a number of sectors. What we, EBRD joined the Global Methane page last year, but we are a bit shifting our approach to how to deal with that. Traditionally, we were targeting our investment in the key sectors, so, um, um, sorry, oil and gas, and we have some projects in Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan to decarbonize uh, these uh, this sectors uh, uh, in the gas, uh, gas and also in Egypt uh, um, to improve efficiency and decarbonization of the production. We also focused more in agriculture to have best practice, develop best practices um, in agriculture and farming with more advanced digitalized crops, soil management practices, and also focusing on waste and uh, waste management to improve the regulatory framework and finance project in uh, these sectors. I think what we see when I was saying we are shifting our approach is that we think the next steps now is more to, in order to step up our impact in this uh, sector, is to develop integrated national technical assistance programs with a view to develop medicine reduction strategies that target all sectors at the same time, energy, waste, and agribusiness. We launched the first program of this type in Uzbekistan last year um, when Uzbekistan joined uh, the Global Methane Pledge with a view to have a roadmap for the country to reduce methane emission, to improve sectoral policies and regulation, to build capacities and to measure uh, methane emission with a better reporting procedure. To do that at a global scale and to, to develop that, there are three key components which we need to, to do. First of all is develop financial innovative instruments and programs that bring together all stakeholders. One of the challenges is that Mason is emitted by a big number of small sources that are geogra geographically dispersed. And sometimes, very often, these sources are also owned by different organizations. So I think in this context, the Global Methane Pledge can play a very useful role of co coordination and to ensure additionality of efforts. And the second element is um, that, so second key component is that we need country-level policies and regulations to scale work in this area and to address this di dispersion issue. We need in that, that framework, public policies and regulation are very important to have reporting, disclosure of methane um, intensities, introduction of sectoral standards and reduction targets, and stimulating investment. You can stimulate investment if you have clear goals and mechanism and long-term predictability. So this is a clear incentive for investment. We also believe that financial incentive could be tax rebates, tax credits could be uh, very important in, uh, um, in, this, uh, in this journey. And last element, uh, which was already mentioned that we need, is to have robust MRV, monitor reporting and uh, verifying approaches, 
and uh, this is a key to be able to monetize carbon emission in the context of the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, and that could help developing further projects. And uh, to do that, we need really self-sustaining rollout of national uh, MRV, um, with na built on the domestic systems, and uh, which calls for strong in support for capacity building and knowledge transfer at, at the country level, but also with a strong national ownership. So I think this is the way we see, uh, I mean, a global approach rather than a project by project uh, uh, approach, and link that with a country strategy. I think this is uh, the way in order that we need to go to scale up and ac accelerate our activity in this area. Okay. Thank you very much. I have a couple of thoughts, and then I'll see if the group has any concluding thought. We have, I'm, I'm informed, a two-minute video, which I haven't seen, that we'll, that we'll uh, watch, and then, w and then we're, we're concluding now. Um, I'm looking to Jennifer for, yes. Okay, so my, my only concluding thoughts, one is the importance of diagnostics. With the science that's available now, the, we, we know where the methane emissions are coming from and they and and that allows then there to be a focus on the big sources of emissions and that may be leakage from uh, from pipelines for example and it's other identifiable sources but uh, that was put forward as Odile said there are a big number of small emitters that are harder to get a handle on and may need regulation uh, to to uh, to work and then John's point about negative costs there are some some projects where you can actually make money reducing methane. We we think we have a big one of those in Iraq with the gas flaring. Gas flaring is so expensive to the global climate with the uh, with the emissions, and it's valuable uh, v valuable to be captured. So those are those are thoughts. And the challenge of the NDCs not really including this area is another added uh, added challenge. Any concluding thoughts from the group, and then we'll turn to the video. John, John, and then maybe Werner to close this out. Hold, hold one second. Can we get John's mic on? Go ahead. Gar yeah, garbage is usually not a very sexy issue, but it's important in this context. And. Uh, you know, better waste management has a profound effect. It has great co-benefits. It really needs to be included in the technical assistance that's being given by the banks to, uh, particularly in developing economies. So make garbage a little more sexy in your lives, and I think we'll all be better off. Uh, and secondly, <clears throat> I, Minister Shia lets me give him advice from time to time. We're all friends. And he's very influential in his, with his government. So I just want to give him the advice that China should join 90% of the global economies and include all greenhouse gases in their NDCs. And as soon as you get, as soon as you get past that preliminary stage and you're confident about what you can do, put it in your NDC. <laughs> Minister Xi had any response there? <laughs> 我呢还想谈一点 完全可以发挥它的经济效益、社会效益、环境效益。我们的观念也有也要转变，这需要技术，需要好的商业模式。嗯，yes. Uh, I have an additional remark to, to make. I think we should also innovate in our thinking because we know there are a lot of uh, uh, emissions of greenhouse gases, including methane, from sectors like oil and gas, agriculture, and waste. With, and there seems to be a waste, but actually there are also resources once they are recy recycled and to put to good use. So that will uh, be great. Uh, th th that will have great 
economic benefits, social benefits, and environmental benefits. But to do that, we need technology and we need new business models. So that is uh, innovation in thinking. Thank, 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 thank you. And I know we, World Bank works actively in China um, on, on waste uh, water treatment and also solid waste. And John's point is really well taken that that's a big chunk of the problem. Let's, let's get those projects uh, going and uh, on a nationwide uh, basis. Can, Werner, can I ask you to close and then we'll hear the, hear the, uh, uh, the two minute video. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I cannot express myself better than John Podesta has just said. Let's make waste sexy. I mean, let's make a business case out of it. That's for us the key thing. We need bankable projects. And that means we need to see the business case. I think it can be developed well. There is one condition. We must monitor and measure. We need to rely more on precise data. So there are some, some holes in the system on which we can work. But otherwise, I think we should not get drowned and desperate in doomsday scenarios, but go approach the whole thing with some belief in technology and our in innovative spirit. Yeah, thanks. That's a great close. Now, can we run the film? Ben. Thank you very much, panel. Thanks, audience.